Hello and welcome to Marriage Matters. My name's Joe. And I'm Andy. And we're glad you could join us for all things that matter about marriage. Because <laughs> um, marriage matters. Yeah, absolutely. And we're doing things that matter about marriage because yes. marriage matters. <laughs> Yeah, that's the plan. And if you'd like to stay in touch with what we do, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can sign up to the newsletter on our website so you won't miss anything, particularly on Marriage Matters. Indeed. Absolutely. So obviously the idea of Marriage Matters is to talk about our own experiences and um, go on a journey and learn something together. So what we're doing this week? Things that matter about marriage. (laughs) Anything in particular? (laughs) Yes, matters of the marriage. So this week we're going to be looking at arguing mm. and um, disagreements yes miscommunications yes. quarrels mm-hmm. all that stuff that sadly does probably happen if we're honest yeah but it's part of life what does the bible tell us and as ever we're coming from our own perspective of now 25 years married mm. what have we learned what mistakes have we made um have yeah. we ever had an argument <laughs> We'll tell you if we've ever had an argument. And that's what we want to look at today. Yeah. And I had a scripture. Ah. Which isn't necessarily immediately about marriage. However, it is about Christians. Hmm. And since we're talking about Christian marriages, which is our perspective and our experience, this fits. So let's go to James chapter one. Mm -hmm. Uh, No, change chapter four. Yeah. You see, (laughs) no arguing there. It's good. (laughs) James 4, verse 1. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? Onwards to verse 2. You want something, but you don't get it. You kill and you covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. But you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Mm gentle james yes direct to the point and we're going to get controversial later yeah i mean i think bottom line is we are going to argue we are going to disagree but james has got a good point there that actually when arguments become unhealthy then then we're sort of fighting it's a bad thing isn't it (laughs) there is nothing wrong with having passion in a relationship Mm. there is nothing wrong with having disagreements in a relationship because if we thought the same on everything it would be really boring Mm. when that passion gets mixed up in disagreements you end up with some quarreling Mm. and that can become inappropriate and no matter what uh, we may think or want to do there is never a justification for sin or for getting stuff wrong before god yeah and we've talked about the importance of being one and so if you're arguing and hurting the other person kind of hurting yourself aren't you yes shooting yourself in the foot sort of thing and so shouting yourself in the ear (laughs) or some such yeah. So yeah, arguments can get very um quite nasty really and, and say things uh-huh. that we, we regret. And um that silly saying that says words will won't hurt, it's not true, is it? Sticks words, and stones may bake my bones, words, but words will never it. hurt me is just it's not true, twaddle. isn't it? And 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 hurt words can really really affect people's lives, especially when you live in a close Verbal relationship. Abuse is a real thing. Yeah. Very and, much. and it can really affect your you mentally, emotionally. Absolutely. So yeah. we've got to be careful. And we're going to touch on Ephesians. Oh. Husbands and wives and submission and an authority. And what does Ooh. the Bible say? What do we think on that? Some meaty stuff there. See, controversial, but it shouldn't be. No. It's in the Bible. Hey, we'll come on to that. So you yes. can look forward to that fun later. Take a little break. Yep. We love making resources for you. Resources to inspire and encourage you. Resources you can stream, share and download in your church, your family or home, whatever your situation. But perhaps as a day of the dog store, you'd love us to cover for your work with children or an all age service. We've been asked to do videos on teaching, so we've covered topics like reverence, prayer and faith, broken dreams and hope. Any money we make from commissions like these goes straight back into the Berry Bunch to keep everything else that we do free for everyone that needs it. So get in touch, let us know what your needs are, and we'll see what we can do. Welcome back to the meaty bit. What's the name for this section? I always forget. Um, I thought that was it, wasn't it? The meaty bit. (laughs) 
I'm sure there's a better name that we could use Probably. for this. <laughs> the meaty bit. <laughs> anyway, so we're looking at quarrels, bad communication, arguments. What mm. does the Bible say? What happens? What's okay? What's not? Yeah. And we're going to touch on Ephesians 5.22. Yeah. Husbands and wife, all that stuff. Anyway, mm. so let's just recap. So James chapter 4, verse 1 starts with this. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? Now, this is talking to the church, not necessarily specifically to Christian mm. married couples. But since Christian married couples are part of the church, it still talks to you. But as ever, if we want to understand what's really going on behind all this, which is quite mm. important, why do we argue what causes those fights and quarrels? Well, within a marriage, the answer comes from Genesis mm. chapter 3. There's this little piece of scripture, verse 16 of chapter 3. Uh, yeah, here we go. So this is uh, Eve's just eating the apple. She's given it to Adam. They've eaten the apple. And then God's come along and they said, what's going on? We're naked. They didn't. He, he knew that they shouldn't know that they were naked because there was no sin. Mm. And then we've got this little piece here in verse 16. To the woman, he said, I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. With pain, you will give birth to your children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. And I read that and thought, okay, so how do I explain that one? Because that kind of, within the context of a marriage, says something. But if I go into my trusty ESV study Bible, it's got some really helpful notes, which I wanted to read out. And this is on verse 16. God originally intended that there would be a complementary relationship between husband and wife, with a husband in a leadership role. But that plan has now been distorted and damaged by sin, this takes the form of desire on the part of the wife and heavy-handed rule on the part of the husband. Mm. The Hebrew term here for desire appears again in 4.7, where the Lord says to Cain that sin is desirous for you. Eve will have the sinful desire to oppose Adam and to assert leadership over him. Adam will also abandon his God-given role of leading, guarding and caring for Eve. Instead, he will have a sinful, distorted desire to rule over her. Thus, one of the most tragic results of Adam and Eve's rebellion against God is ongoing conflict between husbands and wives mm. as they both rebel against their God-given roles and responsibilities in marriage. And then we're going to jump to 522 with a bit of a pause in between because that may well have happened. The fall happens. Mm. Eve may well have eaten the, uh, the, we say the apple. I meant the fruit of the tree of knowledge. <laughs> See, this is how ingrained that little lie is, isn't it? It's not an apple, it's a fruit. Um, but even if that's going to be the result of the fall of sin entering the world it's still not okay to be horrible to one another mm. there is never a justification for sin ever um we can kind of justify it dietrich bonhoeffer in the second world war really struggled with certain parts of faith mm. against nazism how how, mm. how do you come under the authority of people that are so maliciously trying to kill people who are innocent mm. and dietrich bonhoeffer very much was working through that and how do you oppose? How do you stand? Um, and he, I think, in the end, was was very wise in how he uh, dealt with that. Mm. But I mean, it's an impossible situation. What's the right and the wrong? Well, it's still never okay to sin. Cory Ten Boom, same kind of situation, World War Two, The Hiding Place, which is the book that Cory Ten Boom wrote. Mm. One of her sisters always told the truth because the lie is a sin. When the Germans would come, where are the people hiding? They're over there. And Cory Ten Boom would be thinking... Why did you do that? Mm. It's an impossible situation. So we're not talking about that so much, but there are difficult situations. However, it is never okay to sin. But if we understand why we have this desire to argue and fight, it can help us. Yeah. Um, it doesn't make it okay. And there's no point in going, you know, focusing too much on why do we argue. Mm. But there is a point of understanding where do these arguments come from? Yeah. And that's what James 4 verse 1 is saying. What causes these quarrels and arguments? And then he mm. goes on to say a bit more, does our James? Um, you want something, but you don't get it. That's probably every marital strife ever, isn't it? Mm. What do you think? Well, I was thinking about it because it's um, what causes these quarrels. If you have a quarrel, you speak to anyone in, in a marriage or in a relationship, they often don't remember what on earth they were arguing about. They'll like, to be honest, it just all blew out. And I can't tell you what it was about. It often quite trivial. We've had those. And, and so there's something more going on. It's not really about what you're arguing about. There's something about the relationship. There's some that tension, isn't it, that, that, that needs to be reconciled. And there is a difference between men and women and the gender roles and the different 
different sort of situations. I know the environment, the impact, you know, if, if, if your finances can be a big issue. I mean, if, if people do say, right, what were you arguing about? Finances can be a big argument. Money, Where, yeah. sex, children, yeah. in-laws. in-laws. Yeah, we said that at the same time. What holidays you might have, you know, we all have different expectations and different desires and things. So it's difficult Two people. We were talking about that, weren't we, in some of our previous et- episodes about joining together two p- very different people living very different lives coming together and having to work stuff out mm. um, so you've got all of that in the mix but yeah sometimes it's quite funny how you don't even remember how an argument got started and maybe it's not really about that it's about you know again we're f- we're fighting for our desires yeah. isn't how it? often is it about wanting some respect how often is it about wanting to be mm. heard i think of some of our arguments which i shamefully remember and think you know there was no need for that yeah um actually what were we arguing about sometimes i don't remember but it's usually because we want to be heard or we're hurting mm. um i mean some really simple ones have a drink of water this is not stupid uh, there was a period we've mentioned in a previous episode how exhausted we were we'd had a business that had closed we moved house um joe had become quite ill we discovered actually that was the start of a pregnancy mm. of our third child peter and we were exhausted and we had stupid arguments, the most we've ever had in terms of frequency, mm. and also probably the most in terms of the least angry or whatever. It was mm. just, they were pathetic little things. But actually, most of the time, we were either thirsty or we were tired, really tired. Mm. And actually, sometimes we're having an argument, do you know, we just need some sleep. Yeah. Um, so we're not saying let the sun go down in your anger, that's against scripture. But actually, just be aware. This is where it's good to think about where are these arguments coming from. Because mm. if you are exhausted or you're really thirsty, then your brain is going to struggle more. So if mm. you're thirsty, the water goes from your brain, you can end up getting quite aggressive. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's still a thing, but boxers quite famously used to not drink water so their brains would get dry around them so they get more aggressive. Mm. Well, that's kind of what happens without the punching, hopefully. Um, yeah. And so we've got to be careful. Let's let's get the right food, drink. Let's get the right sleep, and let's have yeah. water. So there's a lot we can do to prevent mm. arguments, as much as there are. And we'll go on to that how you deal with the arguments themselves. But prevention is always better than a cure. If yeah. you can step, you know, sidestep a landmine. It's always a good thing. Yeah, I mean, it's really difficult, isn't it? Once you're in the throes of an argument, it's like it's it's game over, isn't it? It's like, how do you stop? Uh, and there can be this tit for tat, can't there? And, and you just sort of get into that. But I think um, if you can step back, take some time out, think, hang on, this isn't working. And I think over the years, we've come to be able to do that. I've grown up. Yeah, I mean, obviously, <laughs> the maturity, gr- growing up life the universe and everything um and learning from our experience um yeah that that does happen doesn't it but uh yeah being able to step away realize perhaps i'm too tired let's talk about this another time and obviously prayer is key obviously asking god into these situations and 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 sometimes we need to go to god and say you know you feel like you're always right everyone thinks they're right you get two people and they both think they're right somebody's (laughs) you wouldn't argue if you didn't think that you were right would you yeah, I suppose the, you could, but it's unlikely. Yeah, I mean, and it's probably you're both right and you're both wrong. Well, you're wrong if you're arguing and you get into a state. You can be um, right and wrong at the same yeah. time. Yeah, so going to God in prayer and saying, okay, w- what do I need to do? And sometimes you, you, to be the bigger person, isn't it, to go, I'm sorry, even if you're not the one at fault or, you know, it's you're not all at fault, it we'll can make a huge difference, can't it? Yeah. We finish on that. Ah. So let's get controversial. Let's dive into the bit of marriage that gets people's blood boiling and really shouldn't because it's biblical. Mm. Okay, here we go. Chapter 5, verse 22. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Saviour. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Mm. 
Now, when we got married, uh, we wanted this scripture read out because it was very important to us. It's God's formula, if you like. I use that very loosely. It's God's formula for a married life mm. and how we approach each other. Um, and I was really blessed when I got married to Joe because she was really uh, keen and praying for me. We've mentioned mm. Stormy and Martin's book. Um, Stormy and Martin or Martian? Really sorry. Stormy and Martin, her book about a, the praying husband and the praying wife. Mm. And it's about praying for each other. And I was very blessed when I got married that Joe was already praying through that, praying for me to be the, um, the, the husband I needed to be, the head of the household that I needed to be. And the amount of respect I got from Joe and support in some big decisions in those mm. first few years when she say, it needs to be your decision, I support you. Here's what I think, but you need to take this. Mm. And two things happen when that happens. One, the, the the weight of that responsibility falls on my shoulders and it's huge. Mm. And two, the weight of that sh- that weight on my shoulders, sorry, is suddenly supported because Joe's holding me up. Mm. And that, I think, is a good image of how it's supposed to work. Um, I say controversial and it's not, it shouldn't be, but the idea of submission, of headship, all this kind of stuff, it's like, oh, we don't talk about that. Well, it's in the Bible mm. and it's how it's supposed to be. It's God's intention. Now, we're coming from our own perspective. This is our own experience. We very much went into this. But when we were getting married, uh, we asked someone to read a scripture, this scripture. Oh, I'm not saying that. That's wrong. No, I like the Bible, but I don't like that part. Mm. And we all have that, don't we? We all have bits of the Bible. We just yeah, yeah. Can we just skip that part? But do you know what it also says in scripture is every single piece of this word, everything in this book is good for teaching and rebuking and training mm. so um we're not going to shy away from stuff this is all about real talk uh i'm not going to waffle around the subject which is what we believe we believe mm. that husbands are supposed to lead your family that's god's decree in here this is his thing that we're supposed to do but we have to set that against the tension of genesis three sixteen, where it says that wives are going to try and prevent that mm. and it also says that husbands will not lead and love their wives well in genesis 3 which is in opposition to the fact that husbands are, mm. husbands are supposed to love their wives as the church but what does all that mean well if you look at jesus as the head of the church which is what i'm supposed to emulate as the husband what was jesus doing he was without stain or wrinkle or sin Mm. will i ever get there in this life no but that doesn't mean i say i so shouldn't try but jesus even till death for something he mm. didn't do so if you're a husband and you're in an argument this is the perfect opportunity to think well i know i'm right on this one but do you know what who cares if i'm right this is the daughter of jesus the daughter of god that i need to respect and be blameless before mm. so if you're arguing as a husband stop it it is that simple and we mm. do have a choice men um but how easy is it for us men and women are completely different men are generally stronger um physically and it's very easy because we, we tend to be bigger or taller mm. uh, or stronger so it's very easy to use that um in a way of kind of getting dominance to win the argument well you might get your wife to shut up but you've just lost before god which matters far more mm. because now you're putting distance between you and god and that's even worse um, I don't know. How, I don't know. It, it, it gets quite um, difficult to talk about this. I know pastors who will skip this passage because, oh, mm-hmm. no, I can't talk about this. The wives have got mad in the church. And that kind of saddens me because this is God's word you're talking about here. Let's have some respect for it. Mm-hmm. And if it's difficult, let's work it through together. But I was so blessed in Joe that she wanted to support me and do everything she could to enable me to be the head of this mm-hmm. household that I needed to be. And here's the thing about that. As Genesis 3 and those notes from the ESV, which was superb, it's not about lording it over your wife. Mm. If you do that, you've failed. Mm. Leading is not about making someone do it. Mm. Leading is about doing something in such a way that anybody who's around you can't do anything but want to follow you. Yeah, I think Jesus showed us what leadership was about, and it was a serving heart. Uh, he washed the disciples' feet. Yeah. Um, he... He didn't ask them to do things that he wasn't willing to do himself. No. His leadership was gentle and loving and kind. And, and I think there is scripture, isn't it? You, you, you shared that, didn't you? You said that husbands need to love their yeah, wives. Yeah, it's, it's the end of this passage. Um, and so it says it's, leadership is, is serving. And, and I love the picture of the marriage being about the bride and the bridegroom. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this, this is a picture of, this is evangelistic tool, isn't it? To share, yeah. show people the way to Jesus. And if we're not obedient and submitting to God, then how are we going to show people Jesus? But also I think we need to be aware of the enemy who wants to come in. So if we're not doing it the way we're supposed to, then he's going to get in, isn't he? So we need to um, keep our family safe and protected with God at the centre, doing 
things the right way. It's not easy. It's hard because no, everything not. within us wants to fight and scrabble and get our own way because we've got selfish at heart, aren't we? Really? Yeah. And then you look at what's going around us in the world and within the church too, where you know we're all equal and we're the same. And I am not the same as Joe, and Joe is not the same as we. We're not. We're not equal in terms of we're exactly the same. We both have equal access to God. We're both mm. equally valuable to God. We both have an equal opportunity to input into our marriage, our family, our children. Mm. However, how Joe does that is very different for me. As a stay-at-home dad, I can say this, 15 years or so, 18 years or so of being a stay-at-home dad, when the boys were very little, um, I was at home. Joe was at work. So any issues that came up with the boys, I was there. If they fell over, which they would sometimes do because they're boys and they'd play and they'd fall and they'd hurt their knee and I'd clean mm. it up and I'd get the gravel out and I'd put a plaster on and I'd be loving and compassionate and we'd get them up and off they go again. About five minutes later, they'd do the same thing <laughs> again. When Joe would come home, one of the first things they would do is go to Joe and they'd want to cuddle and a little cry and like, look at my plaster. Mm. And they'd want some attention. And that was something I could never really provide as Joe could. In the same way, if they were insecure about something and Joe would make them feel secure, she couldn't provide that kind of security that they would get immediately from me because we are very different. Mm. We are not the same. And that's what makes a marriage beautiful. If you're trying to be too the same, it gets mm. really boring. And I think we're seeing a world where everyone is exactly the same. And no, you're not. The picture I love about equality, which really knocked this on its head, was three boys trying to watch a football match over a tall fence. The one boy could see. The second boy was half his height, couldn't see, and the third child was tiny. And there were three boxes. So the equality, they each got a box. Well, the tallest boy could still see, the middle boy could now see, and the shortest boy still couldn't see. And then there was another picture of real equality. Well, the tall boy didn't need any help. The middle boy needed one little box, and the tiny boy had two boxes. So they still mm. used all three boxes. They all had equal access. But that equal access comes with it being very different mm. and that's what I love about this is that we shouldn't just come and say oh we'll skip this passage of scripture I sometimes wonder why it's so contentious but of course Genesis 3.16 the desire for the wife will be to rule over the husband the desire for the husband will be to be in my black country speak a bit hard than mm. it should be um, and use his size but if you're using that you've already failed mm. and being a, um, a loving husband or a loving wife it's not about lording it over the other if you're a submissive wife and this is the thing submission isn't about not doing something it's not about saying nothing and it's not about not being part of a relationship and just you know do whatever that that's not submission the mission is about being an equal part of the relationship mm. but it's a different function and i think the easiest way to understand all of this stuff and would help a lot mm. is to stop seeing it as husband versus wife which is what it becomes and actually see it more as function yeah. so we have a different function to fulfill mm. What do, you, what, what do you think about all that stuff as, as the wife um, in this situation? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's tough scripture, isn't it? But it's about being obedient to God and listening to him. I did have some thoughts, but they've, they've just pinged out um, as we were thinking about that. But um, yeah, coming back to arguing. Um, yeah, it's 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 yeah, we're fighting. We shouldn't be we, we, where there is equality in the relationship is that we are both equally able to hurt each other. Yes. Um, you know, in a relationship when you're married, you've you've submitted yourselves to each other. There's a vulnerability and we know how each other ticks yes. and we can equally hurt each other. No matter whether you're a male or a female, what function you have, that that hurt is going to be real and we can really um, be nasty to one another. And that's where actually in James talks about holding your tongue, doesn't he? Yeah, hold your tongue. James... <laughs> As ever has the answer yeah. for everyone, doesn't he? And it's and yeah, we need to watch our tongue because we can say things and then sometimes as soon as the words come out of our mouths we think, Oh, I wish I hadn't said that, but it's too late, isn't it? I mean obviously we can seek forgiveness, we can say sorry, um, but the hurt is uh, has been done, isn't it? Hurt hurts. It hurt hurts. <laughs> Let's go back to James four verse uh, James chapter four, verse two, the end. You do not have because you do not ask God. One of the things that I'm really struck mm. by is how as husbands and wives that we think somehow, and we joked about this in a previous episode, that you complete me. Well, Joe can't complete me. It's impossible. Mm. I can only be completed in that sense by God. Um, but I, I wonder how often we struggle because we're we're trying to go through life and trying to get from our spouse what we feel we deserve, mm -hmm. what we need, what we should have. We'll get rid of the should because that never helps. Um, mm -hmm. And what is it that Joe can do to help me? Well, she can pray for me. She can support me, but she can't completely me and she can't be to me what god needs to be mm. and if we're looking to our wife or to our husband 
for what they're going to provide for us instead of God, we're in a real sticky wicket and mm-hmm. it's going to go wrong. Which is why James 4 um, talks about the fact that we're supposed to go to God. Mm-hmm. And actually, if we've been having an argument, the fastest way to an end an argument is to get on our knees either side of our bed yeah. and pray. Because when you involve God, you don't want to shout. No. <laughs> and you don't want to be nasty and you, you don't want to dredge up the past and you don't want to name call and threaten things. Mm. Because, you know, well, God's here. Well, in reality, God's already there. Yeah. But putting God in the focus is important. Absolutely. Um, Fierce Marriage is a really good blog. They talk about fighting naked. We haven't done that. No. I'm not sure that would work. Some couples, mm-hmm. maybe. Yeah. Could you fight naked? Probably not. No. It's not something we've ever tried. <laughs> So we've talked about where this strife comes from in marriages. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've talked about that from Genesis 3.16. We've mm-hmm. talked about James 4 and how the fact that um, these quarrels are going to be there. What is that? Well, it's it's evil desires. Genesis 3 gives us the why. So what's the solution? Should we take a break? Yeah. Is that <laughs> the next bit? Isn't it this bit? No, we need to take a break first, don't oh, we? Oh, Okay. How do people talk to you normally? Do they talk in burning bushes? Sit. Sit. Fetch. Fetch. So what I say back? <laughs> what do you say back? You took the stick. Get it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, are you there? Oh, I'm here. Oh, oh hello, Dave. Um, oh, I think we've got the same problem as last week. I can't see you. Uh, have you opened your eyes? Yes, I've opened my eyes. Oh. You name it, he could play it. Uh, pipe organ. Pipe organ, yeah, with all the Lots of buttons, like a spaceship. Spaceship. Oh. Yeah, you're looking good. Have you done something to your hair? Good I had my hair sorted. <laughs> yeah, sorted. Went to the dog groomers. Oh, brilliant. You look great. It's Thank good to you. see you. Do you know what your name means, Dave? Dave. Dave, it just means Dave. Yes. Well, I looked it up and it's short for David and it means beloved. It means you're lovable. Long for duh. <laughs> Long for duh. Big long stick to help him uh, protect like his sticks. sheep. You like, like sticks. sticks, you like sticks. This is the section for resources and tips and what comes to mind as we've been talking about quarrels and fights and arguments and disagreements is a film called War Room. Um, Brilliant film. And it's, I suppose they're taking the analogy of war, of military, and that's kind of what happens. You know, you can turn your home into a military zone between two warring factions, couldn't you? And it's division and all sorts. And if you've got children or other members, the family can get embroiled in some of these arguments and it can get really nasty. And so this war room is is a great film where... um, they look at that, these quarrels that are going on amongst this couple and how to resolve them. Uh, and and we've talked about prayer being key and about sorting ourselves out. Oftentimes we're too busy trying to fix the other person when actually probably if we get down on our knees and get ourselves sorted with God, that's more likely going to change the, the atmosphere, the relationship, the issues. And so, yeah, totally recommend War Room to look at those sort of arguments that ensue in a relationship and how to move forward. Some great stuff in there, isn't there? Yeah, and the importance (laughs) of prayer. um, Yes. Without giving the game away of the film, which we wouldn't want to do. (laughs) It's a great film um, by the Kendrick Brothers, Mm. I think, from the US. It's really good. Uh, But there's an an older wife who's lost her husband, um, takes on a younger wife Mm. to mentor basically and the whole of the film it, it revolves around this relationship for the most part yeah. and how these two interact and the older wife who's been there done it worn the t-shirt and the younger wife who's just fighting against her husband mm-hmm. the whole time and it's that 
that wisdom, that maturity from that um, slightly older lady who comes along and says, okay, you've been doing it this way. How's it worked? Mm. It's not right. Let's try a new approach. Yeah. Here's God's way. And God's way always works. Yeah. And we can fight and wrestle, but it always works. Yeah. So, so definitely recommend that. Oh, uh, yeah. It's a Christian. A hundred times recommended. It is a Christian film, yeah. And, it's and great. prayer is key in, in the centre. I sob every time. Yeah. <laughs> um, go off and read uh, Ephesians 5. Mm-hmm. You can read the whole thing. But uh, verse 22 to verse 33, go and look at it. If you're a parent, you can keep going on into chapter 6 because it tells you how to raise children. And it, it tells you the attitude that should be around the home of um of loving your kids basically mm-hmm. and how do you raise your children and what should it look like it goes on into that yeah. and the other thing is just write out james 4 um i'll just go back to it write out james 4 verses 1 through 3 and just just meditate on that mm. one just make it your meditation verse well, three verses for a week yeah you know wh- where where am i causing agitation or quarrels with my wife mm. if i'm called to love her and treat her as a daughter of the king then Am I doing that? Am I am I doing that in how I behave to her? Am I mm. am I with my children demonstrating a, a servant heart towards Joe? Because as much as I'm supposed to lead my family, well, what does that look like? Well, if if I'm not being pleasant to Joe, I've already failed. If I'm not leading in such a way that she's like, yeah, go on, Andy, go, go, go. If that's not happening, then I'm getting it wrong. Mm. Um, so just take a bit of time out. Go and look at those verses and think, well, what mm. God really saying to me? Where can I be? more of a loving husband husband for myself or a loving wife to mm. joe and again we keep on suggesting these books um just because they're really powerful but it's the praying wife and the praying husband by stormy and martin which is really good yeah and another one which you may or may not enjoy i thought it was a really good history thing if nothing else uh the name's gone we'll link to it um but it's radical womanhood by carolyn mcculley mm. which is great because it looks at some of this in terms of what's the male female role mm-hmm. in society and the marriage in the home how has it developed what's been going on behind the scenes around the you know the globe and stuff but it's quite a good book just to get a really good overview of what's gone on in the last 200 years of history of how relationships have changed mm. there you go tips and resources yeah. take a break take a break <laughs> Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. The point of this scripture is that while physical training is good, it is beneficial for us. It keeps us fit, keeps us healthy. It's not nearly as beneficial as spiritual training and all that makes up training for godliness, such as reading our Bibles, praying and going to church. And that is the point of endurance. It is to show how we can maintain self-discipline how we can endure through our training for godliness. With that in mind, go check it out. So it's time for the takeaway. Mm-hmm. So depending on when you when you're listening or watching this, it might be going and get some food. But takeaway <laughs> is the last part where we wrap it all up. Yes. So uh, what have we talked about today? We've looked at James chapter four. We've looked at why is it that we argue? What's mm. what's behind that? Um, and then we jumped to Genesis chapter three, where we look at the fall. We look at Adam and Eve. We look at eating from the tree of good mm. and of uh, good and bad of, of knowledge. Um, and the, the consequences of that and why husbands and wives don't necessarily get on together as much as we might want to. And then we've jumped ahead to um, Ephesians, Ephesians, God's model. And we've missed out so far, Colossians. Well, we, you wanted to leave that to the end, didn't you? Colossians, Colossians 3.14. I've lost Colossians. Which I suppose is, I suppose, the antidote, isn't it? Uh, to arguments, maybe. Yep. This is the way um, to respond. Uh, we've talked about 1 Corinthians 13, which is all about love. But Colossians is a good one as well. It is. So chapter 3, verse 14 of the book of Colossians says this, And over all these virtues put on love, which bind them all together in perfect unity. Mm. So uh, I remember a church a long time ago, and they're having a real issue with some uh, with the local Wiccan group, uh, which is trying to get into the church and cause strife. And a lot of these witches actually became Christians. And the reason why they did is when they came into the church, they tried to sow seeds of gossip. To, to rip the church apart and all the church folk loved each other so much that it didn't work and they ended up 
becoming Christians because that love was just so overwhelming because mm-hmm. the way that they interacted with one another was so gentle and loving and authentic. Yeah. Gossip couldn't work. And there's another one. You want to avoid arguments. Don't slag off your wife to your workmates. Never good. Mm-hmm. So here's a question. Okay. When I'm leading well, what does it look like and how do you feel? Um, when you're leading well, I suppose it, it brings about peace. Um, and I suppose it sort of, yeah, it makes life easier. Um, and I don't have to stress or worry when you're leading well. And what does it look like? It's I suppose it's just harmony and peace and things functioning well. And yeah, th- things feel right, don't they? Do, do we ever sense. do that? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think most of the time we, we, we manage, don't we? <laughs> Manage. <laughs> We're selling this marriage log, aren't we? How's it been? Well, you know, we get by. We get by. Manage. <laughs> no, it's good. It is good. Yeah. We we love being married, um, and there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that's going to come along and try and cause strife and issues and difficulties. Whether it's trying to do more than you can physically handle as a couple, or you've got children, mm. or you've got sickness, or there's financial worries, or employment worries, or Ukraine happens. There's yeah. so much that can cause strife. And the Bible makes it very clear that it it can happen and it's going to be there. Mm. But it also makes clear that there's no reason to do that. It's not okay. And actually there is an antidote and that is to love one another above all else. Thinking about what you said, I suppose in a way you only really notice when it's not going well, isn't it? So when you ask me the question, how is it? I guess it must be working because you only really notice when it goes pear-shaped, don't you really? And then you realise, I mean, no, but joking apart, when you weren't very well, and then I had to sort of lead, if you like, because you were down and out, uh, really, for the count sort of Probably. thing. And so it was, I had to take lead and, and make decisions and things. I suppose you don't realise just how much perhaps you do or how much you. you are leading, because it's just sort of a natural part of life until you're down. It's like, hang on a minute, this is hard work. This is, I'm tired now. <laughs> um, so, I mean, perhaps that comes back to not sort of taking, what's that? What's the word? You know, um, loving each other. Um, I don't know. Um, mate, you know, appreciating each other, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. You know, not taking each other for granted, I suppose. And, and sometimes it takes, uh, a, 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 you know, a negative experience. Go, hang on a minute. You do a lot. I suppose it's a bit like when if somebody did all the cleaning and one day thinks, you know what? I feel like no one's, no one cares, and so they stop, and everyone realizes, oh, oh, mum does that then, or dad does that. <laughs> I remember you went away for a week's uh, training one time, residential. I had two little boys at home on my own, and it was that was a tough week. Yes, I certainly saw all the things that you do that you, they weren't being exactly, done. Exactly, yeah. Why is it been overflowing? <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't. That was okay. We got through it. <laughs> yeah, marriage is good. I think that's the thing, though. If if you're leading well, it's not noticeable. Yeah. Because if you're leading hard and forcefully, then you're not mm. leading. You're just bossing and that's not that's horrible yeah but it, leading that's done well in any context whether it's an employment situation or marriage or church if if someone's leading well then it's not really noticeable mm. and you just want to get behind them and and push them forwards and everybody benefits everybody does mm. better um, so it's good to have someone driving the ship yes steering the boat <laughs> i don't know uh, something so there you go marriage matters we went there ephesians 5 22 yeah that non-contentious piece of scripture that people get very scared of and I don't know why. Yeah, but God's best for us is a peaceful, harmonious home, isn't there? Without quarrels. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, we can sing, you know, yeah. Kumbaya, <laughs> the guitar. <laughs> when you start playing guitar, I'll be very interested. <laughs> So there you go, Marriage Matters. We hope you have enjoyed another episode. Uh, Let us know what you think, if you want to, if you dare. And uh, we will be back next week for even more of the same. My name is Andy. And I'm Jo. And uh, thank you. Have a good day, morning, night. Back for more matters of the marriage that matter, because marriage matters and, (laughs) and stuff. There are loads of ways to stay in touch with the Berry Bunch. The best thing you can do is to visit our website, sign up to our newsletter, and you can be sure to always stay up to date with our latest news, videos, posts, and updates on our seasonal events. Like us on Facebook, where we hang out and post extra stuff to encourage and inspire you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and be the first to see our latest brand new videos and resources. We're on Instagram too, and share extra photos when we're out and about. 
If you've seen something you've enjoyed, why not share it with a friend and brighten their day too? And if you want to be part of the Berry Bunch family ministry and help us as we continue to provide free resources for people to stream, share, download and use, you can do so at Patreon by supporting us financially each month.